Fort Worth Metroplex and with buying and selling real estate. I'm Jenna Ryan, realtor with Remax Dallas Suburbs. I help buyers and sellers. I work a lot with sellers. I do a lot of listings throughout the Metroplex and I also work with buyers. I help buyers to find properties. And one of the things that's very important whenever you go to purchase real estate is that you get your finances in order, that your finances are in order. It's one of the biggest parts of purchasing a home is, you know, your credit, making sure that, your loan, that you get a good loan, that you get a good interest rate, and that you qualify for a loan. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm not failing you. I have brought the best of the best when it comes to credit repair, Julia Von Erichfried. Erin Freed, sorry about that, with repairyourcredit.org. The woman knows everything there is to know. Welcome, Julia, to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. We're glad to have you here today. If you guys have any questions about repairing your credit, getting, getting your credit good, then please call us on air at 214-787-1190 or 817-787-1190. We're also live on Facebook at Jenna.Ryan1. That's just my personal Facebook. That's where we go live. That's where all my buddies hang out. You guys can follow us online. Um, And today we're going to be talking about the importance of having good credit whenever you're purchasing a home and getting your credit ready for purchasing a home. Right. Right. Very important. So we're going to talk about um, some of the services you offer. Now, tell us a little about yourself, Julia. Okay. I've been in the credit repair business for 12 years. Um, I've licensed and bonded in the state of Texas, and that allows me to do work in all 50 states. Okay. Um, I work with several mortgage lenders and realtors um, to help people become home buyers. Awesome. Awesome. That's wonderful. And so from what I understand, you worked at TRW, one of the reporting agencies, or an account rep. I, I was the national sales director for TRW what? Credit, um, and that's how I got brought into the business. And I left in 2005 and started my own company. So she started. Yeah. She was an, in the know. She was an insider in the credit re, credit industry, and she decided to start her own company to help people. And she really knows what you need in order to get your credit restored and to maintain good credit. That's right. And so, well, let's just start out with the basics. Right. You know. There's three credit reporting agencies. There is Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Okay. And they all are three different businesses in three different parts of the country. Okay. okay. And they basically collect data um, for to, to form your FICO score. Okay. And so your FICO score, you just have one score, three scores, mid scores. How does that work? You know, good question. A lot of people think, oh, is it my FICO? There's so many factors that go into your FICO score. There's actually 70 uh, plus different factors that affect your FICO what? score. Yes. The, really? It, yes. Like, what are some of those factors? Some of them are debt to income ratio, um, limits on your credit cards, um, if you're maxed out or not. Okay. Um, if your uh, your history, if you pay your bills on time, if you're credit worthy, um, if you or if you default, if you walk your debt or not. Okay, so you're talking each credit reporting agency of the three. They each have their own FICO score. No, they they each it's empirical data gathering. The okay. bureaus use software programs to gather empirical data. Okay, so that's why if you notice sometimes when you pull your credit, the three different bureaus the the scores will vary. Okay, and there'll be different scores on each bureau. It's because they all use different software programs to gather their data, and there's about seventy plus different factors factors that affect that debt to income late pay slow pays you know derogatory items there's how long you've had your credit if you have credit um, there's just so many 70 different things that go into compiling your FICO. Okay, and then whenever you go to purchase a home, yes. they take the average of the three scores? How do, how do they score you for purchasing a home? They do. They pull from a FICO, and they usually take your mid score okay. and they go from there. Okay, so so they take your average of all three. Is no, that it's how your it works? mid. Like say, trans- what is a mid score? Um, you have three credit bureaus that they pull from: mm-hmm. Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Let's just for uh, example purposes say one says a five hundred, one says a five fifty, and one says a six hundred. Okay, your mid score would be the five fifty. So they take that mid score, and oh. that's what they base that on. 
Okay. Correct. Okay. And I understand that there are different people that listen to my show. There's some people who you guys have 800 credit scores, you know, you have right. incredible credit and, and you take care of this, this, and there's other people who have issues and everybody really, I mean, even doctors, people that make this millions so of dollars true. still right. have problems with this because it's right. something you kind of need to take care of. Kind of like, you know, life happens. shaving your underarms, right? You know, I mean, you've got, <laughs> if you don't, it's going to get bad. Okay. So you want to take care of this. And if you don't take care of it, little things can happen. For right. example, you know, like, um, I moved recently in my apartment complex, and we discussed this over the phone. I want to talk about this. My apartment complex sent me a bill, and I left the place spotless. Like, I had my housekeepers there, and I was very careful to leave it spotless and very careful. And they sent me an email saying, you owe us $185. Well, I really don't have any power here. I am the powerless one. I was a, I was renting. They had all the power. And I was talking to Julia, and I was like, you know, I surely don't want this to go on my credit because they were like, we're going to send this to collection. And I'm like, what right. power do I have? And she told me, what did you tell me that I need to do there? Dude? I told you because part of, I do credit restoration and education, okay. not just credit repair. Right. There's companies out there that just fix your credit, but then they don't explain what's going on, what you're doing, why you have no money or why you can't uh, pay your bills. So I help I don't want to talk about plan. that. I want to talk about why what I should do about my $185 bill that I got from my apartment complex. Okay. The first step, like I told you, would be to contact them directly. Because you told me, yes. I did. Because it's not on your credit derogatory yet, and so you want to be proactive. You want to call them and tell them, I don't owe this money. I left it spotless. You want to give all the uh, factual data that you gave me to them and, and then ask them to prove what you did. You want an itemized list, and then when that doesn't happen, you demand that they, rem- that they settle. Okay. But I, do I really have any power there? I mean, they really have all the power to really put whatever they want. They do. In this case. They now, do. From what I understand from what you said, I need to go ahead and deal with it. Because I don't want this going on my credit, even if I have to pay the 185 and just suck it up. You can. Because that would stay on there for how long? If it, it can go stay on there seven to ten years. Okay. Unless it's sold to a collection agency. And then any time that's done, say you're, say this $185 bill, dollar bill does go on your credit. Credit. Right. It could stay on there seven years, but if at the six year point they sell it to a third party collection agency, really? it starts the time over allotted by law that this can stay on your credit. Wow. And that a is... lot of people don't know that. So if you can be proactive and go to them and even negotiate, that's part of like you could do debt settlement on your own and say, listen, I don't know the 185. Maybe there was a speck of dust. I'd be willing to pay you $50, but I want in writing that if I do and I settle this, that you will not go and put it on my credit. You have to get it in writing because they will put it on there. Even if they say they won't, they will. Okay. And Julia is the kind of person that can help you to keep your credit spotless to improve your credit score and to keep you out of trouble to keep you from ever having to deal with a problem of trying to buy a house because whenever you buy a home your credit score is going to reflect your interest rate correct you know so you want a high credit as high credit score as possible the interesting thing is is that they are accepting lower credit scores right. just depending on various things how much you're putting down and how long you've been on your job and, and these different things so it's not like it was in the beginning after the crash in 2008 where all the regulation came in and you had to have i don't know oh, a yeah. really 700 credit score and 20 percent down right 720 and it's really really changed and it's loosening up and of course we'll probably you know it'll loosen up and loosen up and then eventually you know it'll crash again that's what happens with real estate markets that's what we're used to and we we deal with it but hopefully it will never be like that they've got so many laws in place right now where you really have to really watch out we we're about to have to go to break but let's talk a little bit about um okay so you want to watch out you want to keep your credit score as clean as possible and pay these little minutia bills before they go into charge off okay. for collection. Let's say That's that- important. Don't pay them after they've gone into charge off for collection because it actually hurts you. It does not help you. That's Are you sure you don't have more more bargaining power? No. You don't, if they okay. okay. If it does hit your credit, yes. then it's gonna stay on there. What if you pay it? If you pay it, it re reports paid 
however much you paid and starts the time over allotted by law. So say you this one eighty hundred eighty five dollar bill does go on your credit and three right. years down the road you're you want to go buy a new house. Right. And you go and you say, Okay, I'm just gonna pay this collection. What happens is that three year old collection re reports from the day you made your last payment and it starts the time over allotted by law can stay on there. So it hits you again as another charge off, lowers your score and it lengthens the time it can stay on. There. That is just no fair. We need to it's fight not. that particular law. <laughs> and and you guys, we're going to go on to break here in just a minute, but I want you to call. Do you have any questions about your credit? Give right. us a call at 214-787-1190 and we will work it through. It's important right. to pay attention to your credit report. Absolutely. And score. With this black man with black hair This is Talk Radio 1190, Dallas-Fort Worth's place to talk. Are you thinking of buying or selling a home? If so, contact me, Jenna Ryan, with REMAX Dallas Suburbs. I was born and raised in Dallas, and I know every area and every suburb. If you're relocating to the area, downsizing, or upsizing, or buying your first home, I can help you find the home that's perfect for you. Contact me today at 972-510-9177. Or go to my website at JennaRyanRealty.com. You can also email me at JennaRyanRealty at gmail.com. Whether you're buying or selling, I'm Jenna Ryan, your best friend in real estate. I have my own radio show, 25 years of sales experience, and a team of experts to help you with all of your real estate needs. Join me, Jenna Ryan, from 11 to 12 on Sundays, where we talk real estate on Talk Radio 1190. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip-flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap even though I slept eight hours. When I invented my pillow, I wanted it to where you can move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. My pillow will get you into that deep sleep faster and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed. It's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10 year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow and I give you a 60 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. My pillow is now offering 50% off their four pack special plus free shipping. Go to mypillow.com or call 800 480 1941 and use promo code IHEART. That's 50% off plus free shipping. Don't delay. Order now. At In N Out, your made to order burger is always prepared with fresh 100% pure beef patties and slow rising sponge dough buns made right here in Texas. Visit inandout.com for locations near you and taste the In N Out quality difference for yourself. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station or iHeartMedia. Welcome back to the Jenna Ryan Show. Welcome to my house. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're so glad to have you here on this Sunday. We're here from 11 to 12 p.m. Every Sunday. Every Sunday we are here, and I'm bringing you valuable information that's really going to help you in buying or selling real estate. Today we are talking with the Julia Von Ehrenfried, and she is with RepairYourCredit.org. She knows everything there is to know about repairing your credit, and she's just a wealth of information. And so we've got her here, and we want to pick her brain. So you guys, if you have questions about credit repair, call in at 214-787-1190. You can also watch us live on my Facebook at Jenna.Ryan1, and we have a caller. Yes, we have Don Boyd. He said he's disputing a claim with the doctor. He says uh, he's trying to charge him $4,000, and he's saying he doesn't know the doctor at all. He wants to know what he can do about this. Great question, Julia. Let me repeat that for the audience. Okay, They may have already heard it, but what can Don Boyd do? He's disputing a charge with a doctor he's never heard of. It's saying he owes $4,000. Right. Hi, Don. Thanks for calling in. Yes. I got a bill just a few days ago, and uh, I looked this doctor up and never heard of this guy, um, and he's trying to charge me $4,000. I've never been to that hospital in Louisville, 
Right. And uh, wow, wanted to see what what I want to do is try to head this off at the at the pass before it, it hits my credit. Right. I don't want, I don't want this. To, have you checked? Have you pulled your bureaus recently? Gone on to any of the sites to pull your credit to see if it indeed has hit? I, I have not. I mean, this is this is just recent. I mean, I just got a statement. Um, wow. Uh, through Blue Cross saying that I owe I owe his office four thousand dollars. Did, did you have? Can person. I ask you a question? Did you have any type of medical procedure done? I did. Even, how long ago was that? Uh, March third. Oh, so it was just in March. Yeah, so, but they okay. said that the procedure, the serve date of services was June first. I didn't have any doctor's appointments that day. Right, I see this a lot. I have over the years. Medical bills are one of the major things that get reported that hurt people. Right, as far as dragging their credit score down, um, that this would fall into. I do credit restoration and education, and this is more like a debt settlement negotiation. And it's good that you are trying to be proactive and handle this before it goes on your credit. I yeah. would contact the doctor directly, and and their accounts payable person, and demand proof of service. Yep. demand the date of services they have to prove it yep. they have to prove it if they can't prove it they can't collect yep. and if they can in fact prove that and you're saying they can't then you can still settle you can settle for pennies on the dollar you can negotiate it down and even before it goes on to your credit but if you do do that get everything in writing okay. they need to prove it in uh, writing you want it in writing okay. to pr for proof and if they can't and it by chance goes on your credit keep I would go monitor from now on every 30 days i'd go on a credit monitoring service there's several good ones out there where you can pay a dollar and log in and see all your scores and what's happening but, but does that count against you no it doesn't that's okay. a soft pull okay i would never recommend one thing over the years anything that would for somebody or a consumer to do that would hurt their credit or lower their credit. And there's nothing I would ever do to hurt their credit or lower their credit. I just want to help people and educate people so they know. I would go straight to that doctor and tell them to verify it in writing, data services, what procedure you had done. And then if they can't verify it, then still keep that in writing in case it goes on your bureaus. Okay. And then she would go in and fight, and you can hire her Correct. to go in and fight and watch your credit and make sure everything is great. How do people get in touch with you, Julia? I am on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Well, and what's your what's your website? My website is repairyourcredit.org. And your phone number? And my phone number is 214-504-5661. That's my direct number. And uh, you can reach me there. Th yes. And thank you so much, Dawn, for calling. We Appreciate love you. It. I hope I helped you. You did. Thank I appreciate you. So you. Thank you. Have mm -hmm. a have before. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Okay. Wonderful information. Right. So um, basically, if I monitor that, see, I mean, I'm so freaked out about credit because you right. hear so many things and you so, there's so much misinformation out Fraud. there, and you feel like, oh my gosh, if I check my own credit, then it's going to make my score to go down. Right. Or. Or, you know, some people just have an aversion. You just don't want to think about it. It's just one of those things you don't want to think about. It's not pressing. You're busy. You're stressed. Your life. You don't really want. It's the last thing you really want to think about. Right. However, it's very important that you begin now early um, to begin to restore your credit, to maintain your credit, to make right. your credit better. If you're thinking about buying a house with Jenna or uh, going to become a homeowner instead of a renter, you really need to start being proactive six to 12 months out because it normally takes, if you do have credit issues or if you have um, uh, some things that you need to clear up and handle, it normally takes three to six months in most cases. However, not all credit issues mean you just can't get a house. Correct. Because I've helped people get homes that had credit that was below 600 before That's and right. these people were able to get a house and we were able to do things such as the rapid rescore Correct. can we talk about that now sure we'll what? talk about the rapid rescore okay that's something that i do with my lenders and mortgage brokers that i partner with okay. if somebody comes to me and they had a credit issue and i've been helping them and let's say for example the a medical bill or a 185 dollars charge off that we brought up earlier was on your credit and we get it resolved and we get all the documentation from the creditors or the bureau saying 
uh, they couldn't verify where it's being deleted. Right. We take that directly to the lender right. that you're particularly working with, and right. they rapid rescore it. And that's, so they, they're actually, you use the laws of credit repair. Of the, of the Fair the Credit consumer, Reporting fair, Act. Fair Credit Reporting Act. And the Fair Debt Collection Act. And the Fair Debt Collection Act in order to get these items removed quickly. This well, is, updated, not removed. Usually I've already removed it, but here's the deal. If, some, if I get a bankruptcy delay, Deleted off your credit. Right. Those credit bureaus have 30 to 90 days to update that uh, fact. Okay, I used the wrong language. What I mean is, is that it does not impact your ability to purchase a house if they do a rapid rescore. No, it doesn't. If anything, it helps them. What that rapid rescore is, forcing them to rapidly update the positive a fact that we just made instead of taking up to 90 days to reflect and put the positive on there, which they do. They right. take forever to put anything good on there because they make money on people with bad credit. I like you explained that credit. to me when we had our conversation. Yes. The other night. So tell me about what, what do you mean? The- when you're shopping and you go buy something and you swipe your debit, they take that money out instantly. Right. But when you go to return it, you don't get your money back the same day. You, you have right. to wait several days. Same with credit. If I get get something deleted off your credit okay it comes off your bureau but they have 30 to 90 days to update that positive effect and they take that time unless you force them to rapidly rescore it to affect positive so you can get your loan well that's you know if you have like a few things that you need to take care of you could do a rapid rescore in order to qualify for a house or get a better interest rate but in the long term for a long term solution right. you want to really make sure that you have someone that you can go to to help you right. to repair your credit to get things to how do you do I'm a just, dispute restoration and education how do i do a dispute how do you do a credit uh, re- dispute okay after a client comes to me and i go over their credit bureaus with them and we discuss what their particular situation is because no two credit files are the same everybody has something different on there or some uh, everybody's situation is unique Okay, once I discuss with somebody what's going on, what's happening, then I send out dispute letters. I send out dispute letters that I have perfected over my 12 years in this business in accordance with the law and the Fair Credit Reporting Act to get these negative items deleted and removed. So these laws are constantly um, changing and you stay abreast of of what is changing in the laws. And so you're able to write um, to these credit reporting agencies and say... And the creditors. And say, of- hey, yeah, mm-hmm. and the creditors. And you're able to say, hey, this is not correct. We need it removed. Or, okay, you told me the other In a day. roundabout way. Okay. I, I make them prove it. If they can't verify it in writing, documented the steps that it took to, in accordance with the Fair Credit Reporting Act to put that on there. I removed bankruptcies, foreclosures, tax liens, civil liens, judgments, repos, late pays, and medical bills, student loans. And people always say, well, how do you do that? How do you get that bankruptcy off that really happened? Or I, I had that bankruptcy, but it's not reporting right. I don't really owe that. Or that dollar amount's not right. Or those dates aren't wrong. Everything or, needs to be perfected in order to have a high credit score. has to be in accordance with the law. And if they report out-of-date, unverifiable, incorrect, or obsolete information in any way, shape, or form during this reporting process to go on your bureaus, they have to prove its legitimacy. They have to prove that they did it correctly. And nine times out of 10, they can't because they okay. don't. They okay. don't follow well, the laws. Well, here's the deal. I was working with you with one of my clients and, um, you know, there was some, I had like something, I was buying a house and I had something, some medical stuff. Right, and I had okay. just, okay, I'm just going to be frank with y'all so you understand the deal. So I had a medical thing on there and I wanted to get it off and I had already paid it. And I, I talked to her for something else, and she was, I told her what happened, and she goes, you shouldn't have paid that. No. You shouldn't have paid that medical bill. And how, why is that? Why should I have not? Because I paid it already. Right. And, and what happens is when it's a collection or charge-off like we discussed before, and it's a medical bill. And that, I see this all the time, like the gentleman that called in earlier. He didn't know it. He didn't even know where it came from. Right. What if he hadn't got that mail? They just slap it on your credit. And that's where professionals like myself come in right. to help verify that it really happened. So now, I should when, not have paid it? No, you shouldn't What have. should I have done, and how would that have helped my score? You should have... Uh, 
reached out to a professional that knows what to say and how to say it in accordance with the law and the Fair Credit Reporting Act okay. to get this medical bill removed. Because okay. you can actually get the what, medical. and also paid it, it re-reported, and it started. The t- I say the medical bill was from four years ago. That's what I'm ago. talking about. It might be zero balance now. Now right. you have a, a medical bill, zero balance, but it started from the date of your last payment. Right. That is not for consumer benefit. I and that will cause your credit score to go that down. It absolutely will. So you think that, oh, I'm just going to... I don't need any help. Right. I'm just going to go and pay all my stuff. It makes me so sad. I hear that all the and time. And then guess what? Um, there was something on there, and they didn't, your money. they didn't give me the right thing in writing, and so blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you've got to get everything in writing, and right. they need to say on there that they're not reporting anymore. Right. They need to say they're not Before reporting. Before you pay it. If Before you're you pay it. You don't, go, you don't just go pay. Uh-uh. Okay. You get it in writing first. If I do pay, if I settle for X that is agreed upon, this will be unequivocally removed and deleted from my credit profile. Once you get that in writing, then you can settle or negotiate um, whatever you feel comfortable with. If, But I only do debt settlement when I've exhausted all my efforts to get it deleted, whether you've paid it or not. That's if you have the six months. But for me, I just wanted to get this little thing off. Right. And it was it was worth it to me. Well, it can take to up do. to six months. Yeah, I mean, if, if I had, a, I really wouldn't. Then I didn't really think about it. And I don't think a lot of people think about it. We've got to go to break here. But before we go, I want to invite anyone who has any questions. Come on Facebook and ask or give us a call at 214-787-1190 and talk to us about credit. Talk to us a question of Julia. She knows what she's talking about. Definitely. Very much. See you soon. We'll be right back. There's a black man with black hair. Are you thinking of buying or selling a home? If so, contact me, Jenna Ryan, with REMAX Dallas Suburbs. I was born and raised in Dallas, and I know every area and every suburb. If you're relocating to the area, downsizing, or upsizing, or buying your first home, I can help you find the home that's perfect for you. Contact me today at 972-510-9177. Or go to my website at jennaryanrealty.com. You can also email me at jennaryanrealty at gmail.com. Whether you're buying or selling, I'm Jenna Ryan, your best friend in real estate. I have my own radio show, 25 years of sales experience, and a team of experts to help you with all of your real estate needs. Join me, Jenna Ryan, from 11 to 12 on Sundays, where we talk real estate on Talk Radio 1190. Texas. It's a big state with a whole lot of wind blowing around. What can we do with all that wind? Or what do you say we power all of our homes with pure 100% wind energy? At Breeze Energy, we're totally 100% green. We don't do coal or nuclear, and we never will. So why not go with the wind? Go to breezeenergy.com. We think you'll see we're a genuine breath of fresh air. At In-N-Out, your made-to-order burger is always prepared with fresh 100% pure beef patties and slow-rising sponge dough buns made right here in Texas. Visit In-N-Out.com for locations near you and taste the In-N-Out quality difference for yourself. The phone lines are open at 214-787-1190. Here's Jenna Ryan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenna Ryan Show. So glad that you're here with me today. We are back in business. We're The show is back rolling. We took a month off and for the summer, and we're back. And we're back at through the end of the year, for sure. The contract is signed. And um, we'd l- I have a wonderful guest today, Julia Von Ehrenfried, and she is with Repair My Credit. Dot repair your credit. Repairyourcredit.org. The woman knows everything about credit repair. It is such an informational show today. And we have a question from one of our viewers on Facebook Live, on Facebook Live at my web, um, facebook.com forward slash Jenna.Ryan1. And it's from Steve Zellers. And he is asking, what do you do if, you're, if your How credit you is trashed? Once it's trashed. Once it's trashed. And here's the thing. I'm talking trash, like, you know, foreclosure. I mean, you told me the other day you could get a loan 
on a home with six months after bankruptcy. There's some programs out there that do that. It, okay. it depends on what mortgage lender you partner with. Some, if they direct, work directly with a bank, they have more capability and more loan programs than some other people do. But normally it can be two years out. A foreclosure can be three years out. But six months out of bankruptcy, you can start getting credit and re you can start rebuilding uh, your credit the day after bankruptcy is discharged or if you're doing a 13 a reorganization and paying it back month to month you can still rebuild your credit and how do you rebuild it after it's trashed right that's a good question well once your credit's trashed you can't really go get credit now can you you're getting declined for a car or maybe you can get a car but the interest rate's 22 percent right and you don't want to do that that actually is one of the fastest best ways is to go buy a used car really at that ridiculous interest rate mm -hmm. and if you have you to pay the it, piper uh, you have to pay the piper and make mm -hmm. your payments good for three six months and it can grump your drop your score up a hundred points really and then, yes and then you're able to refinance and then you can go get another loan and drop it maybe to 16 14 percent pay that good three to six months and then you can refi again it's like paying the piper so to speak new car so new cars one or buy right. a used car with the high interest rate that's one way to start getting your yeah. credit going up what's another way uh, a secured credit card. A, sec a secure credit card. What right. is that? And a lot of people are like, well, all my credit cards are charged off or maxed out and I can't get credit card. Well, a secured credit card is where you take cash your money out of your debit card that you're spending out of your bank every single week, but right. you go into the bank. You right. can go into Bank of America or Wells Fargo, for example, oh. and you can give them cash, $500 okay. or minimum 300 at Wells Fargo. That's the lowest one. And then 500 up to 5,000 or whatever you want. And you give them cash and they give you a secured credit card. Okay. However much cash you give them is what you can spend each month and you reload it. You bring the cash back and pay it. So you use it for your gas and your groceries and uh, your just incidentals day-to-day -day purchases instead of using your debit use your secured credit card and that reports like an unsecured revolving credit card to all the Sweet. credit bureaus and that can jump your credit score up it will jump your credit score up 60 to 80 points uh, instantly it's, uh, within 30 days perfect okay and then there's also a way to piggyback on uh, someone right. else like if someone else okay if someone else has a good uh, your mother, a high, your, your mother, your sister has a high limit credit card with a low balance. They can add you on for as, long term. For long term, they can add you on as a user. Right. And it will actually report into your credit? It will. Say, uh, for example, the gentleman that asked my credit's thrashed. If your mom or dad uh, have or a family member, someone that trusts you and you, you trust them, will add you on. You don't even have to have the credit card. You don't have you to don't use even, the you card. You don't have to use it. They just add you on as an authorized user. That also, it's called piggybacking, but it also gives you, say they're, they had a Discover card and they were going to add you to it and they've had that Discover card card for 20 years you get that 20 year history reporting like you've had it too and it's called piggybacking that is amazing it's amazing and it's legal and it's i help tell people to do it all the time and it helps it how much really, does that really make your helps. score go up well it, it depends on how long the card if you've had a discover card for one year the the, the fico model is not going to report it, and make it as a big a factor as if you've had it 20 years the way the scores range from 300 all the way up to 850 how do you get an 850 yeah wait 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 run that by me again your scores range scores. from what you, you're the base credit score you can have is a 300 and they can go all the way up to an you can go as low like 300 your credit is trash or you don't have any or you're you the may not college have grad coming out of college and you don't have any debt but student loan debt okay you don't have any credit you might have a 340 and you don't know what to do or how do I get credit I'll tell you what to do where to go and how to to maximize it the best without getting in credit card debt I'm now not that's a, a little different that's a little different if you don't have any credit let's go into that in a minute we're still talking trashed here let's go okay. back to trashed okay? okay so one thing you would do is get a new car and pay that extremely high interest rate second you would get a secure credit card Correct. third you would piggy bank on someone else if possible what's some other ways uh they could come to me they could come to you that's right and i can remove the negative uh, and i've had people over the years that came to me they only they didn't have any good credit they only had bad credit hmm. and as i'm taking the negative credit off 
they their scores may be five, six hundred, their scores will drop. And they call me and they're like, Why Ooh. are my scores going down? What's going on? I'm like, Well, I'm taking off all this negative. You have to add positive. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay. You need to go here and get this card. You need to go here. So that's why I say credit restoration and education, because it's more than just deleting negatives or helping you understand. I right. tell you what how to budget plan, how to go get good credit, who to work with, who's the best in this business that will give you the good information to help you. So you tell us not to go to Starbucks. I do sometimes. <laughs> Read my. I was like, article. you touch my <laughs> coconut cold brew. Oh, but I, I mean, might have bacteria in it, Jenna. You need to read. What my do you mean? The, we'll, we'll read my recent post. On no, Starbucks. it's okay. We can talk about stuff. Okay. So I, if you take away my cold brew, I, I've been drinking that coconut cold brew, and it's so good. I love it. It's yummy. Um, can you buy it in a can from a, from the gas station where it's not contaminated by workers? No, I can't. I, I, I've just started drinking. It's really good. It only has 50 calories and it makes me happy. Okay, so you need to not only um, remove the negative problems right. on your credit, but you also need to be building proactive good credit. Proactive. And you need to take steps time. to help yourself. Okay. With somebody's guidance that's a professional, has been doing it a long time, is heavily networked to know what they're talking about, and that get results. Well, can't I just call contact the credit reporting agency myself? Why do I need someone like yourself who is an expert of at doing this? And Why? That's a, that's a great question, and I get it all the time. Well, I can do credit repair myself, and I get it. People say, that and I my first things words out of my mouth is of course you can yes you can anybody can do credit repair yourself you can send the dispute letters in and you can try to get these um, negative items removed but the difference is I know what to say and how to say it in accordance with the laws and she the does credit reporting act to get I can these vouch. things removed whether it happened or not and most people don't and then they get a stall tactic letter back saying sorry this is verified you you can't do anything and we have verified this information and most people are like oh it's verified okay well up. they have little tricks and not ways to, to get around around the laws that she stays you know that's up right. on and so you want to make sure now one thing you told me was um and you, have you know to dispute not just to the bureaus you have to dispute and work with the creditors if you have a capital one on there you can't just go dispute that capital one at experian equifax and transunion you got to go dispute at capital one there's, a, so There's all kinds of crap that you have to do and yeah. you have to utilize the laws of the Fair Credit Reporting Act and which ones and what to say to get it removed. Because keep in mind, these credit bureaus are big for profit businesses That's out right. to make money on and they make money on people with a less than perfect credit. And so they have no incentives. If you've paid any attention to the economy, they're getting sued in million dollar lawsuits from not removing identity through a fraud and theft and because they don't care they don't care they don't want to remove it they're trained not to remove it to send out stall tactic letters even if it's unverifiable right from the beginning right stall 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 whatever so they give up they I mean I, I have seen some very interesting things I can vouch for what she's saying I've seen some interesting things occur and so you really need to know what the heck you're doing when you're dealing with them one of the things that you said that I thought was interesting um, is don't make a payment because if you make a payment on something that you're disputing then that is wait let me finish that is admitting that you owe it so you don't just want to go like oh do a payment plan um tell what me about that with that people say do i talk to my creditors oh my god my phone's blowing up and they're calling me and they're threatening me and they're sending the and they're calling me at work and saying i got to make a payment and if right. you don't pay you know this that or you're going to get sued or or whatnot right i i always say don't talk to the creditors don't negotiate because okay, wait let's let's stop don't talk to the creditors. Don't. Don't negotiate with them. When they call you at work, what They're do you say? They're not there to help you. They're not there to do help you. Do you say it's against the law to call my place of employment? Do not call me here again and you hang up. And, and then, then you check that, your mail and you get the bill. And you check your mail and you get the bill. But then don't call them. Don't call them up to talk to them to negotiate. They don't want to help you. They want your money. And they want your money uh, no matter what the effects or what would happen or the repercussions or the consequences are for you. They don't care. So when I say don't make a payment because it's admitting that it's mine or it's your debt, mm -hmm. remember, 
credit repair is no different than pleading not important. guilty in a court of law. And if they cannot verify that it, how they report correctly, and you're making payments on something that you're saying this wasn't reporting right, or I don't know this $185 apartment bill, but yet the creditor that called you that scared you to death talked you into sending the $20 payment, you're agreeing with everything they said. You're agreeing that you didn't clean your And here's your the apartment. deal. Here's the deal. They have a lot of ripoffs out there. I went, I have a little teeny tiny rash, like a little eczema on my finger, and the, the medication was $600. You know, so there's a lot of fraudulent stuff going on. And I ended up having to call the doctor. I was like, $1,500? I mean, $600 for this little patch of skin on my finger? You know, that's ridiculous. And they go, oh, we have, since I have insurance, they're like overcharging me. And they're like, oh, we have a better um, one for you. We have a better one for you to go to. So what I'm saying is, is that it's not, you've got to protect your interest because there are people who are trying to overcharge you for things. There's all kinds of things going on out there and you just want to make sure that you're being properly, you know, Speaking billed for overcharged. what goes on. Okay. We've got a question from Rob Johnson. Hi, Rob. Love you, Rob. You asked, but we've only got one minute. We've got to wait till after the program. I okay. mean, after the break, come right back and join us. Call us at 214-787-1190. We'll be right back. Are you thinking of buying or selling a home? If so, contact me, Jenna Ryan, with REMAX Dallas Suburbs. I was born and raised in Dallas, and I know every area and every suburb. If you're relocating to the area, downsizing, or upsizing, or buying your first home, I can help you find the home that's perfect for you. Contact me today at 972-510-9177 or go to my website at JennaRyanRealty.com. You can also email me at JennaRyanRealty at gmail.com. Whether you're buying or selling, I'm Jenna Ryan, your best friend in real estate. I have my own radio show, 25 years of sales experience, and a team of experts to help you with all of your real estate needs. Join me, Jenna Ryan, from 11 to 12 on Sundays, where we talk real estate on Talk Radio 1190. Not available in all states. Hey, Carl, how is it you're always golfing? I thought you owned a business. <laughs> I own a recent Irby's Robot franchise, Bob. The robots serve seven flavors of delicious frozen yogurt, and the franchisor secured the best locations for me. Sounds so easy. Yep, easiest employees you'll ever have. Where are you going? To learn more about a recent Irby's franchise opportunity. To learn more, go now to FroyoFranchising.com and use promo code 3535. That's FroyoFranchising.com, promo code 3535. There are two things every parent wants when their child goes to college. For their child to do well and a way to afford it. Now, with Discover Student Loans, parents can have the best of both worlds. Not only do our loans cover up to 100% of school certified costs with zero fees, but we'll give them a cash reward for each new student loan if they earn at least a 3.0 GPA or equivalent. That means every A in history or B in math could help them earn a cash reward for good grades. Just one of the many ways we treat you like you'd treat you. Apply now in 15 minutes or less at discoverstudentloans.com. Limitations apply. Welcome back to the Jenna Ryan Show on Talk Radio 1190 AM. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. We're so glad to have you. I'm here today with credit repair expert, Julia Von Ehrenfried. She is a certified and bonded credit repair person. You can find her online at repairyourcredit.org. And what I want to do is I want to know what are some of the, you know, you're the expert. What are some of the things we need to know about credit? Some of the things you need to know about credit repair, re credit repair. Okay. Um, uh, we had a question if somebody can uh, garnish your wages, you know, right. can I go to jail or can I get sued? I'm getting letters. No, this is civil. It's not criminal. Okay. Um, even though I can remove negative items off your credit, bankruptcies, foreclosures, tax liens, civil okay. liens, Great. judgments, mm -hmm. repos, medical bills, student loans, uh, foreclosures, repos, late pay, slow pays. Pretty much I go after and attack anything negative that's reporting inaccurate, incorrect, and obsolete. Now, somebody just asked, sent us a question saying, can um, 
they uh, what what was that question? If, if can they back. garnish my wages? Yes. Can they garnish your wages? Well, let's go on to this one here from Stephanie. How about when debts are old and creditors put them back on your credit report with current dates, which is re-reporting, right? Right. Because usually that happens when it's sold. Um, if you have an old charge-off collection from Time Warner Cable for a hundred dollars, let's just say, and it's been on there four years and they're not able to collect from you, they sell it. They sell it to another third-party collection agency. West Asset Management, or just for example, and they buy it for pennies on the dollar, and then they start calling you. Once it's sold, it re-reports. So if you're at the six-year mark and it's getting ready to drop off, Crap. if they sell that debt, it starts the time over allotted by law, and it, that's where that current date comes from, Stephanie. So that's how that happens. That's why I say don't negotiate. Don't don't pay or don't settle. But uh, on the flip side to that, can they sue you? Can they garnish your wages? For federal debt, yes, they can. They can garnish your wages for federal debt. Ta- and the federal debt is a tax lien, for example. Can I remove tax liens off your credit all day long? I, I get federal tax liens off. But that doesn't mean that that debt's gone, okay? If you have a federal tax lien, for example purposes, let's just say it's $20,000 tax lien, and it's on your credit, and I get it removed, that is federal government. They will come after you some way, somehow, attach it to your property, or they could garnish. Delinquent child support is something else that I do this case-by-case basis, depending on your situation, just for moral reasons. But that's something else that they can garnish your wages, and you can go to jail, if you don't pay child, child support. support. Okay, what yes. are, are default and delinquent there, default, the same thing? No, default means you completely walk it. Okay, delinquent means you're a little bit late, but you're trying to pay it. So you have this credit card and you maxed it out. It's $10,000. You're delinquent when you make a payment after 30 days, but you pay it. Okay, and you, you, you get late fees, but then you pay it again. That's delinquent. Okay. Default is when you max it out to $10,000 and you walk it and there's no Ooh. payments. What's worse? I guess default. Actually, delinquent Isn't is that worse. weird? Delinquent, Delinquent is worse. seems like it would be worse than actual default because it looks like you're in trouble right now. Delinquent means, yeah, default is, it happens and it charges off and it's one. Default, it, it, and then it's the charge off and then it's done. When you're delinquent and you're continually trying to may it, pay it and you're paying late every single month or paying on time, then not on time, then on time, that hurts you worse than actually letting it go to charge off. And then That's dealing with it and moving forward. How much does um, bad credit really cost you? <laughs> Good question. That's a great question. When somebody has bad credit, it affects all aspects of your life. I had, uh, over the years, people losing their military clearance in the military and having to actually lose their job in the military because of credit. If you can't have a top secret security clearance because wow. you're a credit risk, you have no job. Right. Employers check your credit Employers nowadays. do check your credit. Definitely, right. 100%. Insurance rates. I insurance rates. I work with insurance rates. agents. Ooh, and that's if you true. have bad credit because you're a risk, you pay higher insurance. Mortgage loan? If you can even get a mortgage. If you can get a and mortgage. And you can. And we you can, can help you. We can. Absolutely. As minimum as a 580. We can. There's 575, loan. I've seen. 575, 580. As long as you're putting enough down and stuff. It, there's all kinds of situations, but it hurts you. You don't want to pay 12% right. mortgage. You don't want to pay 12% interest. Not when you, you don't have to, to. Not when you can just do a few things. You can contact Julia. Now, That's tell me a little right. bit about your program that you offer. What do you, how does that work? Okay, well, when I get um, referrals, I partner with several builders, realtors, mortgage officers, bankers, uh, attorneys, actually, and insurance companies. And they, wow. they send me people that have credit issues or send their names, and I call them, and we discuss it. Um, I go over, I, I don't even, I don't take anybody's money until I talk to you. I have to talk to you first. I have to see your bureaus. I go over everything with you, and we form a game plan. Okay. I tell you exactly what's going on, what I think I can do, what you need to do. And then if you're not working with a realtor or a mortgage officer, I have several I can refer you to or put you in contact with that can help you put you on the path to financial freedom. Right. And so, you guys, right. if you're a mortgage officer, mortgage loan officers listening to this, I have a lot that are, are following on Facebook, um, you can read. Reach Julia at what's your phone number, girl? Uh, 214 504 
five six six one. And What's your I'm on, email? My email is info at repairyourcredit.org. Okay. And I'm on Facebook as uh, Repair Your Credit. And I'm on uh, Julia. I'm on Facebook personally. And I'm on Twitter as Credit Repair Julia. And I'm on Instagram as Credit Repair Julia. Wonderful. Now, do I have to pay back old debt in collection? Uh, no. question. First thing, when somebody comes and I see their bureau and we're going over it, they're like, do I pay this debt? No, do not pay this debt. I know what to say and how to say it in accordance with the laws and the Fair Credit Reporting Act to get it off. If it's reporting inaccurately, out of date, incorrect, unverifiable, obsolete information, I can get it removed. But what if what if I really owe it and I cop up to the fact that I owe it? I like to pay my debts, you know, and I want to pay my debts. What right. do you recommend in those cases? Okay, and it's reporting negatively. Right. And you cop up that you owe it. Okay, well, how do you know that they have followed the steps in accordance with the laws to exactly. put it on there? You don't. I make them prove it, whether it happened or not. You know, if you had a bankruptcy chapter 13 and you're paying it back every single month over here to the court, the, uh, the, clearly that's your bankruptcy. Okay, it happened. You're paying it to the court and you have to. Can I get it off your credit for credit purposing, pr- pulling purposes? Yes, I can. How do I do that? I make them prove that they followed the law. And the steps with accordance. Here's with the, the deal. Reporting act to get it on there. Here's the deal. This is um, something that would happen to me. It's like I paid it, and it was reporting zero, but it was still reporting, and, and it you're... really caused a problem for me, even though I paid it. And so, what I didn't know really did hurt me because I paid it without getting the proper language in the letter from them stating that I paid it. It's not enough to just have a zero balance. It still shows up on there. What they have to do is they have to have a zero balance plus blah, 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 blah. You need very specific language and you need an expert to help you. Right. And there's a question that just came in. Does it benefit a company to put things on your credit report? Of course it does. People are out to make money period. Nobody works for free. And and people make a lot more money on people with a less than perfect credit than someone that has an impeccable, immaculate, no blemishes. Why? Interest rates, you know, that's or you true need help with different things. So it benefits them. And the big, the bureaus, their data collectors and they buy and sell your information and they make more money on people that have negative items on their credit so they have no incentive to clean you up or clean you up fast or verify this information it hurts them financially okay so whenever we come to you and we want you to help us with our credit about what does it cost That's a good question, too. I work with everybody. I have an initial down payment that's small. How much? It it can vary from $150 to $400. Okay. You know, if somebody comes to me and they have two little things and somebody comes to me and they have 78 pages and 95, (laughs) and I've seen that. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. You know, and um, then we're going to lay out a budget plan and we're going to lay out how much debt they owe and what's going on and what I'm going to do and how much I'm going to save them. And then there's a monthly maintenance fee and it's $98 a month or $69 a month for a couple. And that normally people say, how long do I have to be in that? You know, up to six months usually. What are you doing for me every month if I pay you, you know, so much per month, $69 per month? What are you doing? Well, I am disputing for you and I'm also educating you. Uh, You can call me anytime, email me anytime. Basically what I'm doing here, I do with you. And I make sure people understand, you know. Kind of like we're talking right now, you're you're helping, but but you would go in and actually do the dispute. Yeah. So do you do like, right, like, like, let's say I gave you my credit report today. How many disputes would you do the first month and how does that work? I go after everything that's negative that you tell me that you want me to dispute initially. My okay. goal is to clean you up as fast as I can to get you back to Jenna to buy the house right. or any of my several officers. other loan officers that I partner with to do the loan. Right. You know, that's my whole goal. And once I help somebody and they see, uh, you know, you, but you will see deletions first month. Okay. Through. So first month you You'll start see seeing deletions, deletions and oh. will you, but your credit score may not go up right away. It, it, it may take some time if you're not actually That's why adding, I work with you. Adding, right. But what we just spoke about earlier is um, I'm just kind of recapping is that you know it may take some time 
uh, it may go right. down before it goes up, and, and but then eventually, I can tell you why. But it wouldn't be anything that I, nothing I would ever do would hurt your credit. If it goes down, it's because you need to add positive credit or lower your debt to income ratios. I'll explain how the FICO works, what percentage of the FICO matters for each part of your credit bureau. I explain what the credit bureaus mean. I explain everything. So I educate. I just I just recommend you do not go in and messing with your credit unless you go to a professional and expert in credit repair who can help you to really navigate the waters, the legal the system legally because there's a lot of little things you don't know right. and used to you could pretty much go in there and do it um you know 10 15 years ago you could do it pretty much by yourself but now there's a lot of little um caveats that you really need a professional to help you this is um this has been a really good show you've been very informative real quick we've got one last question can you tell me specifically what to pay down to best raise the score yeah if you have a credit card that one minute. Is, has ten thousand dollars on it and you're at nine thousand dollars you need to pay it down to 20 30 percent of your balance and if you can't open up another credit card and transfer the balance to split it wow it, because that affects your fico too debt to income ratio you've maybe heard it called that but this is debt to available credit you don't want to have maxed out credit cards it looks like potential disaster to lenders we definitely have to have you on again julia you're yes. very informative thank you so much for your time today yes and thank talk you. to you soon thank Thanks. you for listening appreciate it bye-bye bye happy fourth of happy july, fourth of july. You've been listening to The Jenna Ryan Show on Talk Radio 1190 AM. For more information, contact Jenna through Facebook or email at JennaRyanRealty at gmail.com. Join us again next time on Talk Radio 1190 AM for The Jenna Ryan Show.